Hello friends and welcome to episode 1 of a brand new Let's Play. This is Dark Souls 2, the hotly anticipated game by Namco Bandai that I think a lot of you out there may have some familiarization with, if I were to guess. I've uh, done a Let's Play uh, with my friend Anzariel of the original Dark Souls, but it was him playing and me kind of going over top of that, and I was a little hesitant whether or not I wanted to commit myself to playing through Dark Souls 2, uh, but I've been running myself absolutely ragged uh, going through this game for the last, uh, what has it been, three, four days? The days have all blended together, to be perfectly honest. I've been playing this for, I think I put in 40 hours in the last four days, which is you know, a lot of time, considerably a large amount of time. Uh, it's a very, very difficult game, and it should be very entertaining to see if I'm up to the task of being able to get through all of the insane bosses that are going to be in front of us. So if you'll join me... Grab something uh, to eat, to drink, and uh, sit down. We're going to be in for a long ride. This is a huge game, and uh, this is episode one. So we're going to press start, and we're going to make a new character on my hard drive here. We're going to check all the stuff. Yeah, I still can't be online. That's all right. The first couple of episodes are not going to be online uh, because the game's not actually out yet. But once that happens, then maybe we'll be able to bring some summons in or something like that. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll take it as it comes. So we're going to start new game. Uh, no cutscenes in this Let's Play, unfortunately, uh, for copyright reasons. Can't do that. So I'm going to be skipping by the first couple of cutscenes. I hope you guys don't mind too much. Uh, they're cool, but they don't add a huge amount to the game. The majority of the important stuff is all uh, actually right in the game itself. So things betwixt. Here we are, the first area of Dark Souls 2 with our Unknown Wanderer. As you might have noticed, we don't really set up a character, at least in the very, very beginning of the game. We actually do a little bit of wandering first before that happens. You'll also notice uh, something strange going on in my life bar there. It's at, like, half-mast for some reason. Uh, yeah, that's because we're not human, and when you're not human, you lose a chunk of your health bar each time you die, uh, up until the maximum loss, which is 50%. So that's where we're at right now. Once we go human by burning a human effigy, we'll be able to bring this back up and get things a little bit back uh, up to normal. So yeah, if you're looking for a blind Let's Play, unfortunately this is not going to be the one for you, but hopefully if you're someone who's new to the game, new to the series, new to anything to do with it, you might find it a little bit interesting. Uh, and Maybe you'll find that I even have some insight into how the game works, although I'm going to say right off the top, I am not epic name bro, I am not an expert by any means, so try not to hold me to that standard too often, although I guess maybe sometimes I'll have a few moments of brilliance. We can only hope anyway. Uh, there will be very more likely to be uh, many, many episodes of me bashing my head into a wall as I get killed over and over by the same thing. We'll see about editing through some of that stuff if possible. Uh, so this is where our destination is, that little hut up, at, up ahead of us that's going to bring us to some witches who are going to hook us up with some stuff. Uh, but for now, we're going to head to the left because there's actually some stuff over here we might be interested in. You might be noticing uh, there's some tracks on the ground from a very large beastie that we're about to come upon over around this corner here. Uh, yeah, there he is. Uh, I've been calling these, like, uh, elephant rhino-type monsters or hippo rhinos, something like that. They seem very angry. Um, by the way, we don't have very much in the way of inventory right now, so fighting this guy, probably not a good idea. Um, yeah, I have absolutely nothing, in fact, and you can see there's some big changes from, uh, Dark Souls in terms of how the inventory system works. We can actually have three weapons, uh, equipped to each hand in total. We can switch back and forth. We've got four ring slots now instead of two. Uh, this is pretty much the same. And then we've got a whole bunch of quick slots that we can equip with various items, uh, which will be the down element of our crossbar there in the bottom left corner. I'm gonna just kind of walk right by this guy. I can go ahead and grab the treasure that's over there beyond him, but if I do that, he's going to take a swing at me. Uh, the other option I have is to try and lure him away and then perhaps run back over, but I don't even have a shield or anything, so we're going to go uh, pick a character class before we do any of that. Maybe I'll come back and fight him in just a minute or two. So we're going to hop over this little one-way wall here. Uh, this is the bridge that I was just at before I started to take that that little path that diverged into the, the rocky outcropping. And uh, we'll come up right here. There's uh, going to be another cutscene. We're going to skip that. And uh, we're going to try and recall our name. I'm going to call myself, uh, whatever, Dead Sea has been a, a name that I've gone by in the past. Ooh, that is not how you spell it. D-E-A. On-screen keyboards, man. How do they work? All right, done. 
I've recalled my name. I hope you're proud of me, witches. And you can never change it again. At least you know your own name. Yeah, I guess that is something good, right? Uh, there is also a pretty big change in the fact that after you get a certain item, you can actually come back to this location of the world and actually go ahead and, uh, and respec your character. So if you're not happy with how things turned out, then I guess you can go back and make some adjustments, which is kind of a nice thing. Uh, not necessarily something that had to be done, but I kind of like it anyway. Uh, what do you think it's supposed to be? That's a human effigy, by the way. This is our humanity now. Think back deep into your past. It's an effigy of you. Ooh, fancy. The lip syncing's a little bit funny with these ladies, I have to say, and many of the characters, in fact, in the game. Many of them just don't even have any lip syncing. So we're going to do our class. Uh, let's pick a different class than I picked for my other character. My other character, I did a knight. Um, high strength, dexterity, skilled with weapons. Can I actually see the stats that come with these classes? Kind of doesn't look like it, which is a little bit frustrating because it's... Oh, yeah, no, they're in the bottom right corner. My bad. Uh, holy butts. Uh, that's kind of... Yeah, it's kind of an important thing. So we're going to hit select. We can look at what these all are. There's been a few changes to how character uh, stats work. So we've got our level here, which generally you want the lower the better, because it's easier to get souls at the beginning, so you can kind of customize your class a little bit better that way. Uh, vigor is HP strictly now. Uh, endurance, attribute that determines your overall stamina. Stamina is now lo no longer tied to your ability to carry items, and also the amount of items that you carry uh, if you have three main hand weapons. All of those will stack weight. So that's also something to be aware of. So we've got to balance this stat, Endurance, versus Vitality, which uh, determines your equipment load. As you can see here, we're starting with 6 and 6, 7 for Vigor, Attunement is your magic, how many uh, slots of magic you can have, Strength, uh, wow, that actually starts really high. So the higher the Strength is, generally the more you hit for, uh, but also it allows you to use heavier weapons for the most part, and then that also is offset with Dexterity, uh, which is, yeah, weapons requiring finesse. A lot of times weapons will require a combination of the two, so we've got to kind of strike a balance between how we want to work with that. Adapt uh, adaptability is sort of the, the useless stat as far as I'm aware. I mean, it's good for getting rid of resistance issues, but it's not really the most pressing thing, and the resistances come into play in a big way later on, but at the beginning, not always huge. Uh, and intelligence... Intelligence and Faith, those are both used for spell casting. This is more sorceries, and this is more miracles. Uh, well, specifically miracles, it says that. But there's also some weapons that require one or the other. So that's a quick breakdown of how that works. Uh, you'll see this is the class I picked for my other character. Starting with relatively low everything except for uh, Vigor, which seems to be well above. So this is kind of like if you want to be a bit squishy, which I don't recommend. Honestly, you want to be a little bit more on the Agile side. Uh, so you got a Bandit, Cleric, starts with High Magic, Abilities, Explorer. What's this one going to do for us? Uh, this looks like low everything except for Adaptability. That's weird. And then Deprived starts with nothing and is just straight sixes across the board. That's interesting as well. Um, I'm thinking... Best bet for me right now, start with a class that has a shield. I really like the idea of having a shield, and the, the uh, strength being that high is also almost disproportionately high. But I have a feeling that a uh, broken straight sword is probably what that is. Uh, looks like it's probably going to be bad. We'll see. So, uh, this is our set of gifts we can choose from. I kind of don't like any of them, to be honest with you. I looked through these before. Uh, so, Life Ring... Slightly increases HP. We're going to get to increase our HP by leveling stuff, so that's fine anyway. Uh, human Effigy, this is basically starting with one humanity in a way, so we're going to be able to go human one time. Doesn't even refill our health anymore. Uh, might allow us a summon and also will allow us to reset our bar from 50% health back to full 100 again. Uh, healing Wares, this is going to give us a big boost in terms of... Uh, there's actually a poison... Uh, debuff uh, nullifier there. There's a bunch of healing jewels. There's uh, Estus, of course, is still a thing, but you have to unlock it, and it only comes in tiny increments at the beginning, so you're kind of not going to get a lot of opportunities to heal. Homeward Bone, like, whatever. You could just buy those from a vendor. I don't even get that one at all. Uh, Seed of the Tree of Giants. That sounds like it's really cool, but it actually is just like a PvP thing or something like that. 
Um, this one, toss into a bonfire to raise the strength of nearby foes only for those who seek a greater challenge. Apparently this also might let you do something to reclaim boss souls, but I'm not really sure how that works. Uh, that's something that Ryan told me the other day. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna pass the blame off to him. Uh, petrified something, a simple petrified lump, it may be of use someday. I don't know what that is, I'm gonna take that, because it's the most mystifying out of the set. Uh, then we can customize our character, we actually have to hit B there. Uh, we could set our gender, build, and physique. There are plenty of options for customization in this game, as there were with the other one as well. Um, I made a lady for my other character, so I'll make a guy for this one. We can make him have chiseled, rock-hard abs. Of course we're gonna do that. Why wouldn't we? We can set a random face. I kinda like that idea. Uh, there are actually quite a few different ways that his face could end. He looks a little bit cloudish with that hairstyle, doesn't he? Let's see if we can find a nice... Nice face set up here. Wow, he looks really creepy in a lot of these. Like, this one right here? Oh, that is so creepy. Oh, this one's even creepier, though. They're all so creepy! Should I play as a really creepy guy? Kinda want to. You don't see him with no clothes on that often anyway, and most of the time he's gonna have a helmet on, so this probably isn't that big of a thing. Let's just make him look real silly, okay? So we're gonna put a big old tattoo on his face. Probably seems like a good idea. Let's put, like... Oh, he could have... a. You could have a unicorn, you could have a phoenix, you could graduate from Phoenix University. Uh, the dragon, though, it looks good, but I think the phoenix or the, the unicorn went out, or the steed wins the day. Tattoo color, let's make it... I can't help but just do this, it's just the silliest thing. You can actually set up the color uh, hue exactly the way you want, which is lovely. Yeah, I like this, I like this a whole bunch. This is gonna be good. Opacity... Uh, we can make... I guess this is for the... What, the tattoo? Light or dark? I don't know what we're setting opacity to. I don't actually see anything changing there. Oh, I forgot to add a beard. We've got to have some kind of beard, right? Or at least a mustache. Let's throw that on there. Oh, this is looking good. What kind of... What kind of coloration do we want on his beard, though? Hot pink mustache is a thing. And hair... Let's give him... Oh, this is looking so good! Hair of... Dreads. That's... That's really strange. Alright. The bowl cut with hot pink hair, a mustache, and a unicorn tattoo is kind of where I'm going with this, I think. Hair color uh, for eyebrow is also a thing we need to set. Otherwise, it's just going to look really strange, right? If we don't have matching eyes... Oh, eyes and eyebrows. We give him dark red eyes, so he looks like the straight-up incarnation of the devil himself. Alright, I think we're gonna roll like this. It's a good look, I think. It's a good look. We'll be able to tell when we can see his face very quickly. Uh, by the way, you can also set up these facial features uh, in a very granular way by using these controls here. Uh, you'll have to pardon me for spending so much time in the create a character section. It's a thing that I have a really hard time getting away from. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna finish our creation. Uh, this is absolutely your true self. By your true self, I mean my true self. And, yep. Good to go. Awesome. Alright, so we've got our hot pink warrior here. And we are ready to set off on an adventure of epic proportions. Uh, when I say that, I am not even kidding, though. Like, this game is absolutely epic in scope. It is massive. Uh, at the 40-something hours that I'm at in the game now, I don't even know exactly where I am. I haven't finished it, obviously. I don't know anyone who has. Uh, yet. Obviously this will change in the days coming after the release of this video, but, uh, this is probably... probably like a 60-70 hour game, it seems. I'm very, very high in level. Uh, way higher than I was in the original Dark Souls, but I have to say that the game is disproportionately harder than the original Dark Souls as well. So that will also play a role. So we're gonna head up to this, uh, hill, see if we can maybe kill our first monster and grab our first gem or whatever that happens to be. I actually don't remember what it is. Um, can we just get a backstab on this guy? I don't even know if I have the capability. Oh, no, we're just gonna miss. Well, at least I'm fairly quick. And he's gonna get out of the way. Get it, no, 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 roll. Okay, we're good. I'm keeping my shield up, but my uh, physical is not necessarily super high. This is looking really dangerous for me. I don't know what his patterns are all that well. I've only fought a couple of these guys. Uh, they're not exactly very frequently occurring creatures, probably thankfully so, because they're awfully hard for the very first thing you see, but I guess this is sort of like running into the 
uh, whatever we call him, the, like the stray demon, the asylum demon guy, uh, in the very first area in the Undead Asylum. Only, you know, you don't really need to fight this guy at all. He's not even in your way, really. He's actually out of the way. So if you don't feel like it, you just avoid him. Uh-oh. That's gonna fall on me. Yeah, it did. So I've got ten life gems that I can pop. These are consumable items. You only get one each time. He almost tried to grab me there. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run over this way for a second. I don't want to die in the first episode. That would be a little silly, but I'm probably gonna. Now we're gonna pop this life gem, then we're gonna run... Oh, that... No, oh, that didn't work. And then we're just gonna run, and then we're gonna run, and we're gonna run up here, and we're gonna go find... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Gold pine resin, which would probably be useful in killing the enemy that I'm just getting beaten up by. So we're actually just gonna run away. Oh, I think there's also another... There's another thing over here somewhere, right? I thought there was another item of some value. I don't remember how to get to it. Oh, can I walk over this? Oh, there's a dude down there. I can't really tell if this is a rock formation that I can step on. I'm gonna just fall in here and hope for the best. Uh, looks like it's probably pretty safe, right? You know, just a waterfall. Yeah, alright, we're good. S uh, small, smooth, and silky stone. Those are for Snuggly the Crow, or Snug... I forget what its name is. Uh, essentially just the bird that you drop stuff off at the nest, and then it hooks you up with items. Could be pretty useful to have a little advantage like that early on. You never know what it might give you. Uh, also, upstairs, before we embark, there is a treasure chest, so we should probably open that up. Um, I have made a habit in the past of hitting treasure chests before I open them. That is still going to be the de facto solution, but I want to be very clear about this. This is a good thing for all of you to know as well, if you're just also embarking on your Dark Souls 2 journey uh, this day, uh, that you can break your chests now. If you hit them enough, they are made of wood. Uh, well, the ones that are made of wood are made of wood, of course. Uh, the other ones are not. But the ones that are made of wood will actually break apart and no longer exist after the fact. So you want to be very careful about that. Uh, that's not a good time for anybody. Alright, so we've got some souls, we've got a bonfire, and we're pretty much good to go. Uh, why don't we just, we'll make a, a bit of a run through the tutorial area, because there's not a whole lot to see in there, to be perfectly honest. Uh, all of these, these little doors look like they're going to take you someplace cool. I mean, they kind of do, they're useful to go through. There's a few drops and stuff that you can grab. But for the majority of them, uh, really, they don't take you anywhere except for to loop back around, back out into the central courtyard. Uh, there is, of course, a ladder right there that's a shortcut. Uh, you kick that down and you get up to the top, and that's actually where uh, the Snuggly the Crow's nest is. So you can get to that right away. Uh, anything worth seeing here? I mean, you can see there's some dudes over in the distance, or one guy there, and then behind that cliff face there's actually another. Uh, and in the water... The thing that he's facing is actually a coffin, and as of this point, I'm still not exactly sure what that does. I got in it, and it, it basically fades the screen to black, and then instantly brings you back. Uh, and then you basically just get destroyed by whatever's standing around you at the time. So yeah, that's that. Uh, if you're curious about the tutorial area, you're not really missing anything. Like I said, we're just gonna be... we would have been going through some trees, fighting a couple of guys, uh, maybe end up with... You know, a couple of hundred souls by the end of it. Nothing to be too worried about. This is where it's really at. This is Majula. This is our central hub world uh, in a much faster fashion than we had happen in the original Dark Souls. We are already there. Uh, this is our Firelink Shrine. It's a bit more expansive, maybe a little bit more beautiful as well. This is certainly a very picturesque uh, setting, and they certainly put quite a bit of time and effort and care into designing uh, this first epic scene that you wander into in Dark Souls 2, so I'm pretty impressed by this area. It's very, very beautiful. You notice the god rays coming through everything. Uh, we've got all kinds of different shader effects going on the ground, various levels of shininess and pitted soils and tons of water here. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at how far off you can see into that. I don't even know where the skybox is. I never do in Dark Souls. It's kind of one of the nice things about it. So we're going to light this bonfire. This is our central hub bonfire, and we already have fast travel abilities. So we can go to Majula, we can go to Things Betwixt, uh, and each one of those has one bonfire. If you were wondering, there are more scenes or more areas, map 
zones, whatever you want to call them, uh, then can be contained with this multi-panel display right here. This uh, thing actually scrolls down eventually, so there are a lot of places to see in this very large game. Uh, this is our only bonfire in Majula, this is our only bonfire in Things Betwixt, but if you encounter a zone that has multiple bonfires, you can actually sort between them at the list on the bottom there. I've not sure I've seen one that has five, but I think I've gotten to four. Actually, the, no, the one that had four had five, but I couldn't get to the fifth one. Never mind. We'll discuss that later. So this is our central NPC that we need to be friends with. Uh, she is basically the person that we level up with. And she gives us little hints occasionally about what to do, and she also gives us our Estus, which is lovely. Uh, so we'll be able to do one charge worth of healing at this point. Uh, so now I may level up at the Emerald Herald. Misery leads you to greater, stronger souls. Excellent. Uh, very good, very good. Beautiful. So, why don't we go ahead and equip that, because we'll, we're going to want Estus for the rest of us. There we go. And now we've got two things on our hotbar. You'll notice, actually, if I were to equip a few more, because they load you up with items right off the bat. We've got this effigy, we've got a Divine Blessing, which I'm not even sure why we have, because it seems kind of OP. Uh, we've got the Dark Sign, which is the thing that resets you back in case you get, like, stuck somewhere. Gold Pine Resin, that's that, uh, basically super-powered electrical, uh, charge you can put on your weapon lasts for, like, a minute and a half or so. We've got a Rusted Coin to boost some luck. I don't know what exactly that's used for, I assume something important. Soul of the Lost Undead is a consumable soul item, so we can pick that up and use it whenever if we need a little charge of souls. There are a lot of, uh, consumable soul items in this game, so feel free to use many of them right off the bat. Uh, I've been keeping all my boss souls, of course, but these uh, I've been going through pretty readily. Uh, Black Separation Crystal, Banish Phantoms, Return to Your World. This is a PvP thing, I haven't been able to use that yet. Or PvP, PvE, uh, involving with, you know, invaders of kinds. Bone of Order, restores the link to other worlds. I don't know exactly what that means, and that's the smooth and silky stone that I found, as well as the petrified object that is pleasant to touch. I might actually want to drop this in the Snuggly's crow nest and see what happens. Anyway, the point of me going into that menu is to show you that on the bottom, uh, it now gives you a little like a readout, almost Tetris style, of what's coming next. So when you're in a frenzied situation, that's very helpful that you can see what's ahead of you. So if we were to explore Majula, there are only a few key points that really we need to talk about. Number one, that bonfire over there with the uh, NPC that hangs out. She'll, uh, she'll start out over by this tree, but she pretty much always ends up right near this bonfire, and the furthest she usually goes after we zone out and come back is like around this little uh, circular area. Uh, directly with the bonfire adjacent. Uh, so over here, we've got this poor sad man who, are you? who doesn't know what's going on. He's uh, he's actually our first blacksmith, but he locked his key somewhere or left it somewhere. Uh, we'll find out later it actually got stolen by someone, but I can't get him into his house. I think this guy's kind of dumb, because if you look around, there are ample opportunities for him to get into his house. If you notice, it's actually kind of dilapidated as crap. You can actually uh, just run around the side of it. Just... just you know, prop up uh, a box up against there, just crawl right in. It's really not that big of a deal. He could have unlocked the door from the other side, but he's not that smart. And in Dark Souls world, uh, you can only jump that high, so I guess that's probably a factor for him as well. And I imagine the heavier you are, uh, the more difficult it becomes to jump. So anyway, so we've got a couple more buildings and things to explore before we move on. Uh, this is a big old pit of death right now. We can't get down there, but if we were in the uh, mind to be a speedrunner, I imagine one of the very first things that we would do, perhaps, is we would uh, go ahead and get a ring from this NPC that allows us to fall a bit further. By the way, this NPC is just an adorable cat. Uh, I have never seen this animation of this cat, actually. She, uh, she, she's silly, and she, I don't know, seems to be trying to get into this wall or sharpening her claws or something. Oh, she sells rings and things, just about ready to fall. Oh, and uh, like I said, she's adorable. Oh. She'll sit on that table so most just, of the time. Oh, yes. Uh, you, you call me Shalkir, Shalkir, I guess. Oh, so. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not good with names. Uh, she says I smell wonderful constantly, which is, is, like, really nice positive reinforcement, I suppose, since I'm, like, mostly an undead warrior with bright pink hair and a silly pink mustache and a unicorn tattoo on my face. So yeah, that silver cat ring right there costs uh, 13, almost 13 and a half thousand souls. We go ahead and grab that. We could equip that when we have sufficient health bar, uh, meaning our vitality has been leveled up a number of times. We should actually be able to roll and fall down onto those twigs. Uh, if you wanted to rush, there's actually an item at the very, very bottom of this pit, which would give you kind of a nice bonus to starting out. Uh, in fact, it would allow you to get some health back Oh god, little purple guinea pig things. I hate those. 
uh, they, they hurt you a lot at the beginning when you don't have a good way to battle them. Uh, so this is a very important first thing that you do. Go ahead and grab this Estus Flask Shard, because this is what allows us to have multiple heals. Right now, it does not work the way that you might remember Estus working, in that you would start out with five Estus for every Kindled Bonfire, every regular Bonfire. Kindled Bonfires go up to ten, and then eventually when you got the, uh, the thing from Killing Pinwheel, you actually go up to twenty. Uh, no longer is that the case, we actually can only go up to one right now. Uh, until we find those Estus Flask Shards, which are scattered about the world. Seek those who's so, once she have, so feels like letting me look at a menu... A here? Yep, alright, there she goes. Not. She's asking However, me about the Shard. Yeah. We're gonna go to Upgrade Estus Flask, we're gonna give her that Shard, and then she's gonna power up my Estus Flask so I can now have two charges. There's also uh, this dust that you'll find on occasion that you can burn in fires, and burning that stuff is basically like reinforcing the Estus Flask, gives you plus one, plus two, so on and so forth. Uh, so you'll definitely want to be aware of that. Anyway, other places that you might want to know about in Majula. Uh, if we were to head back along this path, there's actually a branching path that goes up and to the right. That's going to take us to a, a little scary place where there's a guy sitting with a cool-looking sword, and then there's a petrified woman. We won't be able to do anything about that situation for quite a while, so no reason to even get worked up about it. Uh, and here we've got a vendor who sells various uh, you know, weapon-type things. He's a sad guy as many people in Dark Souls world are. Uh, he's got some okay armors, I suppose, as well as some decent shields. Uh, first thing you want to be very, very aware of and very keenly acute... Oh god, the guinea pig thing followed me in here. Uh, but what I was trying to say is you want to try and get a 100 physical resistance or physical block shield as soon as humanly possible. Uh, the game becomes very, very different when you actually have the ability to block... Uh, all of an attack instead of just part of it, because otherwise everything's going to be chipping away at your health. So we can actually go down here at some point, that's going to take us to another zone, and there's actually an area over to the left that will take us to another zone. Uh, and then up there I believe we can start a covenant. I'm just going to join that covenant just to see what it does, if it even will give me anything. I don't know. It seems like most of the covenants have been primarily uh, PvP focused. That's five homeward bones we just found on the ground there. Uh, we're going to enter it. Uh, this will set you upon an arduous path. Okay to join this covenant? Yeah, because you know what? It was an arduous path before. It says, are you prepared to join this covenant? Join the... I don't know. I got an achievement, though. I don't know if I... Okay, you you had enough prompts that you talked me out of a game. I was really going gung-ho. If you didn't have all those other prompts, I would have just let it go. But that is not the case. So, uh, if you're wondering where is the very first path that we're going to undertake, the very, very first path, is going to be directly to the left of this wall and down down a little uh, nook, as most things in Dark Souls tend to be. So we're going to head down there next episode. Uh, the adventure technically will formally begin. We will start on our first proper zone and start grinding away toward the idea of becoming a supreme champion being deity. We'll see. Uh, for now, I'll just resign myself to getting killed by tiny guinea pig things. Uh, who are apparently nearly invincible at this stage in the game and do tons of damage. Oh, and by the way, if you go up to this monolith up here, there's a guy I think that also lets you join a covenant, and at the base of that monolith, it tells you how many times you've died in the whole game. So that's kind of useful. Uh, zero deaths worldwide. You're, let's keep it that way. You have that this. It is a uh, yeah, so let's just join his covenant instead if he I wants us to... Sorry about skipping through all the dialogue. This is uh, not going to be a dialogue-focused or story-focused Let's Play, in case you were wondering. Uh, we're going to mostly be... Oh my god, this guinea pig thing has followed me everywhere. Get lost, you sucker! Get out of here! You know what I should do? I should just rest at the bonfire, and then it's not going to bother me anymore. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up the first episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, as with all new series, I would absolutely love it if you would consider leaving a like on this. Uh, let's me judge and gauge the amount of, you know, reception of what you guys think about this if you're into it. Of course, if you're not into it, that's totally fair as well. Leave a comment, let me know uh, what you don't like, uh, instead of just disliking, I suppose. I mean, you could do both, if you really have to. But I definitely appreciate any support when the series starts out that sets the bar uh, of where we're going to go from this point forward. You know, that's a good look. I don't know how you could really top that look, to be perfectly honest. Also, what's going on on that island off in the distance there? Is that a place that I've ever been to? It may or may not be. I don't know, hopefully we'll explore just about everything at some point. But I will see you all next time. Have a lovely night.